Dean Dean of uh, head coaches in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. Year number 14 for the Philadelphia native and LaSalle graduate, 1978 LaSalle grad, who was a longtime assistant at LaSalle before getting his opportunity to be a head coach here at Niagara nearly 15 years ago. Our officials, as you see, that's Brian O'Connell on your screen, Brian Dorsey and Dan Anderson as we are set for action. No football, no NFL action to compete with this afternoon. Vin, we've got college basketball with a uh, series that goes back a number of years. Both these schools have been in this Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference since 1989 when Niagara joined Manhattan in the MAC. And it just shows you there that the Purple Eagles are extremely tough at home, regardless of whether they're a young team or a veteran team. Always a tough matchup here at the Gallagher Center. Well, certainly this is a young team for Niagara. Joe Mahalik's program had a couple of down years, but he has re-energized it with young talent this year. Uh, freshmen and sophomores are 90% of this team scoring. And as you mentioned, they might have the best freshman in the league. And that would be Wanye Green. He'll be number 10 in white today. He's a 6'3 freshman from Philadelphia out of Archbishop Carroll High School. And he is currently the number two scoring freshman in the entire country. He spent most of the year as number one, but his assists have gone up in recent games, scoring down just a tad. But either way, he is a lot of fun to watch. And their perimeter players get up and down the court and play so well and with so much confidence at home. They struggle sometimes inside, but the guards are fun to watch. Well, Niagara looking to avoid what would be a third straight loss, trying to cool off the hottest team in the MAC, the Manhattan Jaspers, who had the basketball first here in Western New York. Purple Eagles starting out in zone here. Good interior passing. And the Andohar, another one of the good freshmen in the conference, gets the first two points. So he's going to be right there for top rookie in the league. Terrific late signee out of Rice High School right when Massiello got the job last spring. Yeah, 6'5", 205, big enough to play inside this conference, but has perimeter skills as well. Antoine Mason waits for the cutter and finds Lemon. Good movement without the ball. Good cutting action away. That's something we're going to see a lot from Niagara. Joe Mahalik's been trying to get this group to reverse the ball more and get cutters going. Here goes Beeman. Pull up from the baseline's a little strong. This is Mason on the pull-up. He's a freshman out of New Rochelle High School. Beeman on the post, and he gets the roll. The number two scorer in the back at 18 per game has his first two today. And he's not just a deep perimeter threat. That's what makes George Beeman so good. Back to the basket game as the Manhattan Press is already in full effect. He could beat you in other ways. That said, he's well over 40% from beyond the arc. Very versatile. He has been a prolific scorer from back in his high school days on Long Island. And this year has really blossomed as a junior under his new head coach, Steve Massiello. Here's Beeman going with the high socks. Good size, this Niagara team comes in handy when they go to this half-court zone. Beeman short on the floater. Andujar, nice job to tip it to Colinette, who could not control it. Mason back to Green. There's your freshman backcourt that has so many people here in Western New York thinking about a very bright future. And that's when they're tough to guard, when they get it up and get quick shot attempts off in their secondary break. that out of their guards. And this Manhattan team, Doug, has had some games this year where they shot the ball so terrific from outside. Sometimes they tend to settle for jumpers too much. He loves it when they can put it on the deck and penetrate. Real good balance at the offensive end for Manhattan. You've got Beeman at 18 per game, and then nobody else in double figures. On any given night, anybody can beat you, but it's been working so well lately. We said the Six straight wins, but it goes back even farther than that. Manhattan has won 12 of 15. In fact, they, uh, their last loss was way back on January 5th against Loyola. It's 
hard to believe this is the same program that won just six games a year ago to play with a lot of confidence. With the shot clock expiring, the jump shot is good by Malcolm Lemons. Four early points for the sophomore out of Washington, D.C. Cutters, you don't want to get stagnant with your spacing. High post Andujar into the corner. Alvarado gives it back to Beeman. Man, he's doing a good job cleaning up the defensive boards right now, holding the Jaspers to one and done. Scooter Gillette blocked by Colinette. Alvarado fouled on his drive to the basket. That's one thing Steve Masiello preaches with this team. Just because we're on the road, fellas, does not mean we have to play conservative. They're quick, they push it. Alvarado's terrific with the ball, but that is the mindset they have. We do not have to walk it up just because we're on the road. Push the pace. Well, Steve Masiello is not shy to tell you that he is looking to build what his mentor, Rick Pitino, has built in Louisville and in other stops around the country. Emi Andujar knocks down the three. And most importantly, Manhattan's able to pick up the guards in the backcourt. This is when they like to wreak havoc. And the last time we saw Manhattan here on an ESPN three game a couple of weeks ago at Ratty Gym when they just wore Siena out with that pressure. I mean, it was a Siena team coming in with only seven scholarship players, but the pressure that Steve Masiello's club brought to the table really wore down its opponent. Our first media time out of the afternoon. We'll take a break from the Gallagher Center. The Jaspers with a two-point lead over the Purple Eagles. It's the playoffs. We haven't served a single calorie all season, and we're not serving one now. If you can't handle it, go sell foam fingers in the parking lot. How many calories are you carrying? Zero! How much Pepsi taste? A lot! Now get out there and make me proud. Yeah! Pepsi Max, zero calories, maximum Pepsi taste. Welcome to the end. For the glory of the Division I Mac Men's and Women's Basketball Championships. March 1st through the 5th at Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. Action guaranteed to have you on the edge of your seat. All the way with the slam dunk. The way to the NCAA. The Mac Championship. March 1st through the 5th at Mass Mutual Center. Grab your tickets at Ticketmaster.com, MacAchusetts.com, or at the Mass Mutual Center box office. Anaconda Sports, your sports authority. Proudly supporting local high school athletes throughout the region. We want to thank all the teams and coaches that have made Anaconda the number one dealer in the Northeast. Football, baseball, basketball, soccer, whatever your sport, Anaconda has what you're looking for. From the latest gear and team uniforms to logo shirts and hats for your company. Make Anaconda your connection. Hey, if you want to go for sports equipment, go to Anaconda Sports. It's awesome, baby. The Pepsi Max National Mac Game of the Week is brought to you by Pepsi Max. Zero calories, maximum Pepsi taste. Blue Rock Energy. Blue Rock Energy saves you money on electricity and natural gas. Blue Rock Energy putting people in power. The American Red Cross encouraging you to do something that means something. Anaconda Sports, home of the Rock, is proud to sponsor the Mac. And by Dunkin' Donuts. What are you drinking? America runs on Dunkin'. Welcome back to Western New York. Manhattan with a two-point lead over Niagara. Let's take a look at our American Red Cross keys to the game, Vin. Well, they do not want to let the Niagara guards get going from the three-point line. Manhattan really wants to defend the three-point shot, get to the foul line, get good penetration. Niagara has to handle this Jasper press and keep the guards in front of them. Manhattan so tough when they get into the teeth of the defense. Kadani Brutus into the ball game, one of the co-captains for the Jaspers at the point. Back outside to Beeman, who's fouled on the shot, so he will shoot three free throws. Joe Mahalik not happy with that. One of the cardinal rules of defense, do not foul the jump shooter. 
Liam McCabe Moran has also checked in out of that first media timeout for Manhattan. And we're also getting our first look at Marvin Jordan, one of the contenders for the sixth man of the year award for Niagara this year. He's another young guy that the Purple Eagles have who could go for four to five threes in a clip. Very streaky at times offensively in a good way. All three for Beeman. Here is that Manhattan pressure. I mean, Tanksley comes back from the front court to help relieve the pressure. They have a couple different type of presses, Doug. You know, sometimes you'll see all out trapping and double teaming. Other times, they're just faking at you. They're just applying that ball pressure, trying to weigh you down. Blocking foul as Gillette hit the deck very hard. Bodies flying right there, and Brian O'Connell saying the defender stepped in a second too late. It was a good roll that time. Tough hit. Well, as the secondary defender, I also wonder, were his heels outside of the little mini semicircle? He may have been standing on the line, and that may have made Brian O'Connell's call even easier. Yeah, just a little too deep there. Hard to tell for sure, but it looks like Scooter Gillette's okay. Talk about the, the different presses that Manhattan uses, Then, What would determine when you use one as opposed to another? You know, a lot of times you'll see them get into their 2-2-1 zone press after they score. Now, guy on the ball and matching up in their full court trapping is usually more in dead ball situations. You'll see that after three throws. Jasper's with the ball now. This is Kadani Brutus. Tell Masiello talk zone offense in the first media timeout. More bodies cutting, more screening on the ball. Six to shoot. Beeman lets loose. Ball's kept alive. Tanksley with a rebound. Good job of defensive transition that time by the Jaspers. Not easy to get back, stop the ball, and set up a half court zone. 15 to shoot. This is Antoine Mason using the screen, looking for help. Jordan from way downtown. Emmy Andujar pulls it down for the Jaspers. The hand coach and staff talking before the game, really preaching to the guards to get in and help rebound. McKay Moran off the mark. Beeman misses on the putback. And here come the Purple Eagles, down by three. Tanksley, way off the mark. You see why defensive rebounding is so crucial in a game like this. Niagara will shoot a lot of threes, and they'll shoot them deep. You need all five guys on the glass. Bad pass by Beeman, and here comes the Purple Eagles three on one. Jordan, the easy two. When you're on the road in conference play, turnovers usually lead to transition buckets at the other end. And Marvin George, 5'11", sophomore from Peoria, Illinois, is on the board. Drawing the Purple Eagles to within 12-11. McKay Moran looks inside to Ramel Brown, who is called for the charge. Tough break that time for Brown and the Jaspers. It's good interior pass by Moran. And that one looked a tad late right there. Tough ball, tough break that time. This is a dead ball situation. Jaspers matching up five on five in the full court. Let's see if we see some aggressive trapping. Was the ball deflected? It was not. Lemons felt that the ball was deflected, I think. So didn't go after the pass. One thing about this Purple Eagle team, Mason's one of them. They all like to shoot the gap. They all like to gamble and deny in the passing lanes. 
Mason averages nearly one and a half steals per game. Green, 1.7, which is third most in the conference. They are best in the league, been in turnover margin. I have to say they do love to take it away. Ryan McCoy into the game for Manhattan, turns it over. And that, that type of stat, Doug, helps teams when you start to get to the heart of conference play. Everybody has everyone scouted so well. You need 10 to 12 easy points a game when you could turn your defense into your offense. Donovan Cates has also come in for Manhattan. Wanye Green, no look out to Jordan. Extra pass to find the open man in the corner, but Lemons was short. As we mentioned, Wanye Green, third leading scorer in the conference at 17.2, but his scoring has come back just a bit because he has been assisting so well. Last five games, he has averaged five, uh, seven assists per game. He's up to third in the league yeah. in assists. Yeah. Really passing it well. Including 11 in one game at Canisius. Take a break with a one-point Manhattan lead. Hey, what are you drinking? Dunkin' Ice. Biggest iced coffee I can get. Iced coffee helps me keep up. I love iced coffee. Drinking Dunkin'. I'm drinking Dunkin'. Drinking Dunkin'. Dunkin'. Dunkin' iced coffee. I run on Dunkin' iced coffee. America runs on Dunkin' coffee. I am very much a mama's boy. I love her to death. And it was just, I mean, it's going to be hard. I know I'm going to miss home a little bit. My last goal has always been to be a surgeon. I found out that Niagara has a great science department, so I was like, hey, I like this. I want a school that's a little bit more hands-on experience, one-on-one -on -one with the teachers, because I think you learn better that way. I do want to do research, especially on cancer. My mom had it, so, I mean, it's just something I'm definitely very passionate about. I only applied at Niagara because I knew this was the place I needed to go. Your dream college should have it all, promising not just a degree, but an inspired direction for life's journey. An intimate college with a global alumni network, a residential campus experience, a subway ride from the capital of culture and opportunity, where you can pursue your dreams and change the world. Manhattan College has been delivering on this dream for over 150 years. Go to Manhattan.edu and discover what a LaSallean Catholic college education can promise your future. Manhattan College, dreams delivered. Hey, what are you drinking? I'm drinking Dunkin'. Coffee. Black, straight up. Extra cream, three sugars. French vanilla. Iced coffee for me. Iced coffee with a turbo shot. I'm drinking Dunkin'. I'm drinking Dunkin'. I'm drinking Dunkin'. Drinking Dunkin'. America runs on Dunkin' coffee. Welcome back to Western New York. Manhattan with a one-point lead over Niagara as the Jaspers try to sweep their Western New York road trip. Mac.tv is the official broadband network of the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. The portal includes live content from Canisius, Iona, Manhattan, Marist, Ryder, and St. Peter's, plus Mac Championship events. Visit Mac.tv slash register to sign up now. As I mentioned, Vin, on Friday, Manhattan beat Canisius 78-66. You talked about the fact that George Beeman was so good scoring the basketball, 24 of his 33 points. Came in the second half that night. And I'll tell you, what was most impressive about his 33 points, you look at the box score, two three-pointers. That means really getting inside of the defense and really utilizing his mid-range game. Mel Brown is also very good on Friday against the Golden Griffins. Haven't heard much from him so far here this afternoon. Niagara with a chance to take the lead. Down 12-11. Mason's pass was undetected by Joe Thomas, and so it went out of bounds untouched. A concept not enough teams do zone offense-wise. Set pick and rolls against the half-court zone. And by the way, uh, Antoine Mason's father, 13-year NBA veteran Anthony Mason, made the trip and is in the building here at the Taft Gallagher Center. Said he was checking out his other son over in Erie for the D-League game. Anthony Jr. Why not just drive a few more hours? Former St. John's star. And by the way, he's not the only former NBA All-Star in the building. Calvin Murphy, the all-time greatest player in Niagara University history, is also here. He's being honored a little bit later on. And we'll have an opportunity to chat with Calvin Murphy at halftime. 
of Mason to Jordan. Lemon, he's been active, but not, unable to finish on the putback. And a foul against Niagara. And I'll tell you, Manhattan has dodged a couple of bullets in terms of this type of play. They drive, they attack the rim. Looking like over the back right there. We've seen about three or four times this half, Niagara get a full head of steam penetrating in the full court and kicking to threes. A couple of them haven't dropped. And Manhattan has to be aware of that. That's the way the Purple Eagles love to play. First foul on Joe Thomas, the redshirt freshman forward from Miami. And the third against Niagara here in the first half. Brutus. He's bottled up and in trouble. Jump ball and the possession arrow means a turnover. It's coming back the other way. And that's what we talked about at the top that Joe Mahalik wanted to see. Containing dribble penetration. A lot of these Jasper guards are really tough when they put it on the floor. Thomas sets the screen. Mason goes the other way. And what a finish. Terrific finish. And Steve Masiello is on way. Calling a timeout right now, getting into his team, mostly about the weak side defense. A lot of guys on the ball here. Look at what Mason did. He negated the pick and roll. Everyone thought he was going to come right off the pick and roll. Instead, he went baseline. Just a red shirt freshman, but like his dad, well built, able to finish strong in traffic. Mac fans, the Mac is now on Facebook. Make sure to like the Mac today. And also make sure to follow the latest Mac happenings on the Mac Twitter page at twitter.com slash Mac Sports. There's young Mr. Mason, who, as we mentioned, his older brother was the uh, star at St. John's a few years back, Anthony Mason Jr. And Antoine is actually in his second year here at Niagara. He sustained an injury early last season, so he played three games as a true freshman. But then the injury cost him the rest of the year, so this is his redshirt freshman year. His dad was talking about how much they worked out together in the summer in the offseason. Really getting him stronger, really feeling that his career was starting now. Mason's listed at 6'3", 210. Played his high school ball in New Rochelle. But he lists Queens as his hometown. And Emmy Andujar will have a chance for a three-point play. This is what makes Andujar so difficult to guard because he has the size of a forward. It's a big wing. He puts it on the deck, and he can take hits, take fouls. has that length and size inside. But most importantly, the nice soft mid-range touch. Niagara coach Joe Mahalik is getting an explanation from the officials. There was a disagreement or confusion as to who the foul is called on. And check. Brutus called for the foul. Well, let's show you Anthony Mason, the longtime New York Nick. Still looks like uh, he could dominate the paint if you could uh, get him onto the floor. But like you say, he made the drive up from New York City to watch his son here, here this afternoon. He looks like he's focused, too, in terms of media. He's got the headset. He's got the, the earpieces going. Perhaps listen to a little local broadcast. Well, we saw that uh, the game where Niagara played at Iona a couple of weeks ago, Anthony was here as Lemons lays it in. He was at the game and at halftime was waiting for his son to come off on his way to the locker room and gave him a few pointers right there as though he were a coach on the staff. I'll tell you, at times he looks like his head coach. Sometimes he looks like his older brother and mentor. Three-pointer falls for Liam McCabe Moran. Good bounce for being on the road that time by Moran. foul against Alvarado and they're going to call it on the shot surprising they're going to give him two free throws 
thought that Mason reenacted some shooting technique after the whistle that time. That was the first foul on Alvarado. And the fourth against the visitors from the Bronx. And Dad not too happy about that missed free throw. Missed free throw equals frown in the family. <laughs> I'll tell you, it is not surprising, though, that Mason has had success. And, Doug, you know over the years, these undersized forwards have always had success in the match. No question. I mean, you've got the, the size that he does and the ability to finish in the paint. It's not surprising. Beeman, no good on the three. Nice rebound, Colinette. Oh, great swing. McKay Moran. Terrific shot fake by Moran at the top of the key. Thought he had the pull-up J at the foul line off one dribble. He took that extra dribble in the paint there. Luckily received the call. Is that something you work with uh, the kids not over penetrating? You know, accepting the fact that, hey, I've got an open 13-footer. Go ahead and take that. You should be able to make that. Don't go into traffic. Absolutely. A lot of coaches call it the spider's web. Don't get too deep into the web. Just penetrate it. And I'll tell you what, that is a Steve Masiello trait. Rick Pitino's individual instruction for the guards, they are huge, especially the terrific catch-and-shoot guys. They really stress the shot fake. Get the guy in the air in that one-to-two dribble pull-up. Purple Eagles down by three with the basketball. Ball pressure right here. Jaspers need to stop without foul. Tanksley's been quiet so far here this afternoon, and now Gillette is called for the foul. If you look under in the paint, a lot more green jerseys than white jerseys. The majority of the time, if you have more guys on the glass, the refs will be in your corner with the over the back calls. Seventh team foul against Niagara. And the second against Gillette. And so they walk to the other end of the floor. And Colinette, a 6'7 senior from Queens, is at the line. He's the first ever RFK High School graduate to play Division I basketball. And he's done all right so far this year, averaging just over six points and five rebounds per game. Massiello loves his hustle, loves the fact he could be out there for five or six minutes and fill a lot of columns in the box score. Really produces and stretches. When they go on runs, you see Colinette give them a lot of terrific stuff. Thanks, him. Offensive foul. And that's understandable. That's a perfect example of a freshman mistake. He gets a couple more seasons under his belt. Even next year, he'll know you got to jump stop. You can get called for the charge off the pass. Now Joe Mahalik has great hopes for his 6'6 freshman from Philadelphia. I mean, Tanksley averaging eight points and five rebounds per game. But uh, a few weeks back, he likened him to former Siena star Alex Franklin, who went on to become the conference player of the year as he evolved from year to year to year. He sees a similar type of possibility for Tanksley. Yeah, it's a good comparison right there. And it takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. Joe Mahalik very upset right now with the officials. And he has been teed up. Saw the technical being called. The official was right next to Coach Mahalik. What's that like? You've been the assistant at Rutgers at Iona, holding back the big guy. Well, it was a lot easier to hold Kevin Wheeler back than it was Jeff Rule. <laughs> I will say that. Um, you know, conference games get feisty. These officials have a tough job. I think what Joe 
was most angry about is there's some calls in basketball where if the whistle is half a second late, it's okay. But fouling on the jump shot like that, rarely do you see the late whistle. Mahalik disagreeing strong. So it's George Beeman, junior co-captain from Roslyn, New York, at the line. He made third team all-conference a year ago when he averaged 16.3 points per game. And I'll tell you what, Niagara needs to worry about Beeman right now more than ever because you've seen this season where he goes into some cold shooting sh stretches and then he gets a few foul shots under his belt and it almost puts him in rhythm with his perimeter shooting. Now the officials, as you see, over to the monitor on the opposite side of the court from us to check something on the video. High school juniors check out all 10 Mac schools at the 2012 Mac College Fair. That'll be on Friday, March 2nd at the Mass Mutual Center in Springfield, Mass. Join us for a guest speaker at 9.30 a.m. with the College Fair to follow in the Mac Fan Fest. For more information, log on to Massachusetts.com. That's M-A-A-C Massachusetts.com. Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Apparently they're checking timing, and you may have also noticed the uh, officials in all 10 MAC arenas are able to utilize five permanent HD cameras that have been mounted in the ceiling just for this purpose. So if the game is not televised, of course this one is, so they've got our video, but it gives them more opportunities and more angles to check things, but they're able to figure out the timing here. I'll tell you, it's really amazing technology. Great job by Rich Enzer and Ken Taylor having to put that in at all of the gyms. And it came at great expense, but the officials continue to utilize it. So it looks like possession was in question there from when the technical was given out. Got a quick glimpse there. One of the cameras mounted here on the ceiling of the Taft Gallagher Center. Under eight minutes remaining here in the first half. And that rebound hit the bottom of the shot clock. And so it goes back over to Niagara off the miss by DeCarlos Anderson. We'll take a break. Steve Masiello's Jaspers have opened up a seven-point lead. Division One Mac Men's and Women's Basketball Championships March 1st through the 5th at Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. Action guaranteed to have you on the edge of your seat. All the way with the slam dunk. The way to the NCAA, the Mac Championship, March 1st through the 5th at Mass Mutual Center. Grab your tickets at Ticketmaster.com, MacAchusetts.com, or at the Mass Mutual Center box office. That's the worst half of football I've ever seen. Are you telling me we can't do this? I got this, coach. You know, people said, Pepsi Max, you can't get maximum Pepsi taste with zero calories. Who said that? But Pepsi Max didn't listen. We just delivered it. So get out there and taste that sweet zero calorie victory. The little guy's right. Yeah! Pepsi Max, zero calories, maximum Pepsi taste. Do you validate parking? The Jaspers lead the Purple Eagles by seven here at the Gallagher Center. The Mack and Ryder University hosts the 2012 NCAA Rowing Championships at Lake Mercer in West Windsor, New Jersey. That'll be from May 25th through the 27th. For more information, visit ncaa.com slash sports slash rowing. 
during that timeout. Lead official Brian O'Connell came over and further explained what they were checking on the video replay. And Vin Parisi, if you could explain what he told us. It was a great explanation. They were checking possession. You know, a lot of people believe and think that you're on offense until the ball leaves your hand. You're actually on offense until the ball gains possession, either going out of bounds or gets rebounded by the other team. The technical to Joe Mahalik was called while the ball was in the air. So technically, Manhattan's still on offense. So they went to the possession arrow to figure it out. Take a look at our stat track. Niagara trying to hang close here at home. This is a Manhattan team riding a six-game winning streak. And a big three-point shot by Marvin Jordan coming out of that timeout. That's not what Manhattan wants to see. Jordan can score in bunches and get hot from deep. Jordan's got five points. He averages 11 on the year. It's a big bucket to get the lead back down to four for Niagara. Kidani Brutus around the rim and out. Wanye Green. What Manhattan did right there is very difficult. They started in zone and switched to half court man to man defense midway through the possession. Beeman lost it. Whistle. Kind of a Bronx cheer against the team from the Bronx. Got the call against the Jaspers. Beeman whistled right there for the reach in. A little frustration reach in call there as Beeman was falling down. Manhattan College is located in Riverdale, New York. That's a section of the Bronx. And we are here in Western New York at Niagara University. Mason fouled on the shot. Oh, we saw him work the left baseline earlier in the half bin. There he is comfortable coming in with the right hand from the right side. Just big and strong taking up space. And he's good at putting it on the deck and getting by defenders when the defense is running at him and guys are closing out. And I always felt more so than quickness sometimes, guys with very strong upper bodies are difficult to guard off the dribble. It seems as though defenders are bouncing off of them sometimes. Well, Mason certainly has a game that seems similar to that of his father. He was sitting up in the last row here at the Gallagher Center, the former New York Knicks, Anthony Mason. And certainly strength was a big part of Anthony Mason's game in making it in the NBA. Dad a little happier about those free throws than the last time Antoine was at the line. McCabe Moran back on the floor for the Jaspers. Niagara's really turned up the heat defensively here. Giving Manhattan a taste of its own medicine. And Mel Brown also is checked back in. McCabe Moran with a hand in his face, able to knock down the three. That's what you need when you want to battle on the road. You need roll guys to step up and hit big shots. Seven for the senior from Rye High School, just outside of New York. Purple Eagles turn it over. Josh Turner, number zero, has come in for Niagara. Again, Niagara, the preseason coaches poll was picked seventh. Manhattan was picked eight, but both have done better than expected, and specifically the Jaspers. Mahalik, the dean of the Mac coaches, always gets the most out of his ball clubs. And then, as you mentioned earlier, Doug, Massiello going to be right there for Mac coach of the year at the end. What he's gotten out of this ball club, inherited six wins. Had a mold and mesh guys together. The philosophy was turned upside down in terms of aggressive full court pressure. And he really was able to get this group of players 
to buy in. And right from the start, he credits Kadani Brutus, who was from day one setting the right tone, got himself in the best shape of his life, dropped 25 point, or 25 pounds rather. And Coach Massiello says of Brutus, I owe him dinners forever. And you know as well as I do that coaches, while they can coach, they need the players to police themselves and do the right things, and they need to get that type of leadership from somewhere, whether it's a, an upperclassman or somebody else. They need the players to take responsibility. And it's so easy when the young guys buy in right away because they're in the same boat as you. But when the older vets yep. who have been there for a few years before you, when they buy in, that's when it's really special. Green, terrific crossover. And strong off the window, and here comes Alvarado. It's fouled by Mason. It's not a foul. You want to pick up 75 feet from the rim in the backcourt. Good spin that time by Alvarado as he saw Mason approaching. Right off the defensive rebound. Nifty crossover, a little bit too long. Alvarado looks to push off every defensive rebound and a costly foul on Mason. Foul number one on Mason. Ten team fouls against the Purple Eagles, so Alvarado is shooting two. Turner in for Lemons. You might be able to tell there's a group of girls sitting in the... Uh, Stands just behind that basket. They uh, part of a cheerleading group to put on a show and join the basketball game as well. There's some of the girls trying to mess up Mike Alvarado from the free throw <laughs> line, but luckily for the Jaspers, he's at nearly 78%. Take away by the Jaspers. Here comes Alvarado. Had Beeman on his right. And he's called for traveling. Tough break. It looked like a wet spot that time. He had a full head of steam. Alvarado's very quick the, with the ball in transition, and that is definitely a wet spot. And taking care of it now. Mason Jordan Green in the backcourt for Niagara. Lemons and Turner flying up front. Thought he got fouled on the three and said it's just an air ball. I'll tell you, now all of a sudden the Purple Eagles can't breathe on the perimeter. Manhattan's really clamped up defensively. We got an illegal screen on Brown. Joe Mahalik's Purple Eagles down by seven. Take a break and come back here at the Gallagher Center in Western New York.
Welcome back to the Gallagher Center. Doug Sherman along with Vin Parisi. The Manhattan Jaspers with a seven point lead over the Niagara Purple Eagles. Mac fans, VIP and club seats are currently on sale for the 2012 Mac Basketball Championships, March 1st through the 5th in Springfield, Massachusetts. Prices start at $250 for a prime seat to all 18 games of the championships and include hospitality and a ticket to the Basketball Hall of Fame. For more information, visit Massachusetts.com. Speaking of the Basketball Hall of Fame, Calvin Murphy is a Naismith Hall of Famer and was just honored here inside the building, he, he used to dominate oh. in the late 60s and early 70s. And again, we'll have Calvin join us for a couple of minutes at halftime. What an all-time great. Well, the numbers are just staggering. All-time leading scorer in just three years here at Niagara. Average for his college career, 33.2 points per game. Just unbelievable. 33. I mean, Tanksley misfires. And Manhattan will walk it up with a seven-point lead. These last three minutes are crucial. Does Niagara even it up, or does Manhattan go in with maybe a double-digit lead? Post speed a little tough to handle for Collinette, but Thomas is called for the foul. I just feel like these last couple of minutes of the half are so huge for the momentum heading into the locker room at the break. Colin is two, two from the line so far here this afternoon. As a team, the Jaspers are 8 of 11, including a perfect 5 of 5 for Beeman. But Beeman has struggled from the floor. He has missed seven of his eight shots. But he and Andujar with seven points apiece to lead the Jaspers. What's most important for Manhattan when the second free throw goes in, that's when they like to set up their full court pressure. Mason right to the bucket. Matt Cielo is puzzled right now, not so much for the ball handler in that defense, it's for the weak side guys in, in the paint. No one stepped up. Carlos Anderson back into the game for the Jaspers. This is Anderson, number one in green. McCabe Moran left alone and buries the three. Hey, what a find and pass that time by Ryan McCoy. Big possession, big shot. Tanksley hits the three. They give it right back, and Steve Masiello is furious right now with his ball club. They get the big three-pointer. They go up by nine. And they give it right back, and now it's a six-point lead. Look at that, loose balls. Sometimes those are the possessions that decide ball games. Now one of the things that Steve Massiello has brought, along with that cardinal red tie, the defensive principles that he learned from Rick Pitino. This was not part of it, though. Well, two guys on one. So two guys on the ball handler that time not communicating. And the guy wide open in the corner. That is not their defensive philosophy. Well, they're striving defensively to uh, deflect at least 40 passes a game. That's a Patino staple. When asked at his press conference, how much are you bringing from Louisville and Patino? He said 99.9%. .9%. Yep. Colinette on the putback. Well, he says the best any individual has ever done in terms of deflections in one game was uh, Terrence Williams had 19 in one game for Louisville a few years back. And he's still urging these Jaspers to get to that level. They're calling it the other way. What they're saying is watch the offhand. 
hooking him that time. <laughs> Cannot just look at the basketball. That's why there's three officials out here and not two. Second foul on Tanksley. McCoy to Colinette. They've tried to get that high-low action from the top of the key into the paint the last few possessions of the half finally executed. And McCoy is coming off of his best game as a Jasper on Friday at Canisius, earning more playing time here today. Mason continues to carry a hot hand for the Purple Eagles. I think that's what Mason's at his best. When he gets into that mid-range area and he's able to twist, turn, use his body with the soft touch. Coming up on the MAC Halftime Report from the Gallagher Center. We'll take a look around the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. As mentioned, Calvin Murphy will join us live. And then we'll have our first half highlights and statistics as Joe Mahalik's club tries desperately to keep this thing close before halftime. You may have a chance at two possessions. You've got to just finish strong. It's an eight-point lead. You don't need an extra turnover or something happening. Your goal right now, keep chopping into it. See if you can turn the Jaspers over right here, but you do not want to go in down double digits if you're the Purple Eagles. And Ryan McCoy, who I mentioned, played so well against Canisius on Friday, inbounds the ball. He's a freshman from New Jersey, 6'8", 185. Feeding the post into traffic, though the ball comes away to Niagara. Niagara screen in that zone again, and it worked. Mason had an open look and buried it. Huge bucket by Mason. Six second differential. Let's see. Now they're taking their first open look. McCabe Moran wide open. Dagger. He's into double figures, as is Mason. Shot clock off. Don't go in too fast. Don't want to give Manhattan one last crack at it. Three seconds. Two seconds. Good defense again by Manhattan. Good final sequence on the defensive end by the Jaspers, who head to the locker room with an eight point lead. A defensive battle here indeed. Let's see who comes out with the momentum early second half. Our score at halftime 38 30, Manhattan over Niagara. We will be back with a back halftime report right after this.
Purple Eagles and the Jaspers. Mason has looked extremely good at the offensive end. Well, Mason's been terrific for the Purple Eagles, but I like the way Beeman's trying to get himself involved in other ways. Three rebounds, two assists, and a perfect five for five from the charity stripe. Second half underway. The visiting Manhattan Jaspers in their Kelly Green Road uniforms. Mohamed Koita gets the start once again. Along with Andujar, Alvarado, Beeman, and Colinet. Alvarado is fouled by Malcolm Lemons. Lemons, Mason, Gillette, Green, and Tanksley. Same starting five in the second half for Niagara. Second foul, by the way, on Lemons. In they go to Colinette. Got good position that time inside Gillette. Joe Mahalik's going to the bench already. That's how Manhattan scored with a minute to go in the first half. That high-low action can't be happy they score in at the first possession of the second. Mason, who leads Niagara with 11 points, resets the offense, 11 to shoot. Wanye Green off the hesitation is foul. If you're Niagara, how do you get Juan, Wanye Green going? I mean, he comes in averaging 17 points per game. He's got, got just three so far. I, I think it, it starts with their transition game, and it starts with their penetration. He's not a guy that's going to run off six or seven screens in the half court. It seems as though he gets his best action when they're pushing the pace and when they're penetrating the defense and kicking. Well, Green had a foot injury in the summer of 2010, and at that point, some of the bigger schools that were recruiting him backed off, but Joe Mahalik and his staff kept on him and wound up getting a real gem. Second in the country among all freshmen in points per game. He gets one out of two from the free throw line on that trip. So much good young talent up here. Think about that, 90% of the scoring from freshmen and sophomores. This is not a program you're going to want to play the next couple of years. Now Green averages 17 per game. Mason, 15. Tanksley, 8. Lemons, who's a sophomore, 8. Marvin Jordan, also a sophomore, averaging 11. You have all those guys for two to three more years. Ball went through, but wave it off because it hit the bottom of the shot clock. Second time we've seen that here this afternoon. Bet he couldn't do that again if he tried. <laughs> Good touch by the shot clock here. Look at that. <laughs> Mason defended by Coita. Here's Green using the Thomas screen to free himself up. And he'll head back to the free throw line. It's the second time the Jaspers have fouled the jump shooter. Steve Masiello now going to Kadani Brutus. Their ball screen in the zone again against Manhattan. Green coming off. Looked like he started to brace himself during his follow through. There's Kadani Brutus coming back in, replacing Mohamed Koida. Green's had a couple of Game-winning shots late, despite being a freshman. He beat Sam Houston State. Also beat St. Francis of Pennsylvania with a clutch shot late. He's got three quick points here in the second half, all from the foul line. A typical Niagara guard from Mahalik. Big, athletic. And from Philly. That's right. Alvarado hits the three. There's a typical New York Manhattan player. Out of New York City, Alvarado stroking it well now. Yeah, out of All Hallows High School. He was on the all-rookie team in the conference last year. Wanye Green, air ball. Thomas tries to save it. Tanksley had it for a moment. Here's Mason. That's how Niagara gets the majority of their perimeter looks. They get you on a string, they get you rotating, and they reverse the basketball well. Beeman lost it out of bounds, but Niagara was the last to touch. 
One thing you gotta love about both these ball clubs, it does not matter whether they're in man or zone. Very active, active hands, looking for deflections, quick rotations. Zones has a, has a negative connotation sometimes. People think you have to be passive in a zone. Nice. Andujar gives it back to Alvarado, who's fouled by Thomas. A freshman and a sophomore, and it does not get better in terms of ball movement. You want to get it to the middle of the zone, the quick kick out, now the rip through baseline drive by the freshman, and another terrific pass. Great interior work there. Now we talk about the youth on the Niagara roster. The same can be said for Manhattan. I mean, Beeman is a junior, so you only have him for one more year. Collinette's a senior, Brutus is a senior, but with Ramel Brown, Michael Alvarado, Emmy Andujar, they have a very strong core of young players as well. Absolutely, they still get Coida for one more season. Masielikos, Coida is defensive shutdown guy. Interesting to see how long he sits up here. Niagara will keep possession. Jasper's going man to man on the baseline, out of bounds underneath. Colinette, the block shot. Alvarado at the other end. Big four-point swing. Mahalik's going crazy. He wanted the goaltender. Instead, it's a transition bucket for Manhattan at the other end. And then a turnover as Green stepped on the baseline. Looks like he's trying to throw it off his leg. That is close. Good conversion by Alvarado at the other end. I think that was on the way up. I think that was good. What about you? I agree. First time live, I thought it was a goaltend, but watching the replay, I feel like... Great angle. That was a clean block. Andujar finds the open man, and Brutus with the three. That's how college basketball works. It's a game of runs. That was a huge four-point swing, and now it's a 14-point lead. Time out here at the Gallagher Center, and the Jaspers imposing their will on the Purple Eagles. Hey, what are you drinking? Dunkin' Ice. The biggest iced coffee I can get. Iced coffee helps me keep up. I love iced coffee. Drinking Dunkin'. I'm drinking Dunkin'. Drinking Dunkin'. Dunkin'. Dunkin' iced coffee. I run on Dunkin' iced coffee. America runs on Dunkin' coffee. It's the playoffs. We haven't served a single calorie all season, and we're not serving one now. If you can't handle it, go sell foam fingers in the parking lot. How many calories are you carrying? Zero! How much Pepsi taste? A lot! Now get out there and make me proud. Yeah! Pepsi Max. Zero calories. Maximum Pepsi taste. Everyone here at Iona College has a great spirit of enthusiasm as students start to see our facilities and speak to our faculty. They realize this college gives our students a great opportunity to learn more about themselves and go on to fantastic careers in whatever field they choose. The first thing that strikes you when you arrive at campus is the beautiful buildings and grounds. But above all, Iona focuses on students and student success. And Iona is an institution that changes lives. Hey, what are you drinking? I'm drinking Dunkin'. Coffee. Black, straight up. Extra cream, three sugars. French vanilla. Iced coffee for me. Iced coffee with a turbo shot. I'm drinking Dunkin'. I'm drinking Dunkin'. I'm drinking Dunkin'. Drinking Dunkin'. America runs on Dunkin' coffee. Welcome back to the National Mac Game of the Week presented by Pepsi Max. Doug Sherman, Vin Parisi here in Western New York. The Mac now has apps for your iPhone and Android. The apps deliver instant updates, including Mac news, scores, standings, and video straight to your mobile device. Visit MacSports.com slash mobile for more information. And Steve Masiello's club has begun to stretch out the lead with a 9-2 run here in the last couple of minutes. Last Sunday, these two teams met down in Riverdale, and Manhattan won the game 71-64. That game seesawed throughout the second half. Beeman went for 24. 
And Wanye Green was held to only six points. And Green has not gone off at all so far here today. He's got the basketball now with six points, only one field goal. But when uh, Manhattan has ripped off these six straight wins, it's been their defense that has done it. We've seen a lot of that here so far today. Oh, you could have said it better. They've been at the top in terms of defensive field goal percentage in the league nearly the entire season. That, no, by the way, George Beeman has been terrific during the six-game run, including the career-high, rather season-high, 33 points on Friday against Canisius. We've got ourselves another timeout. We'll step away with the Jaspers up 14. It's knowing that you will always compete against the best while making you become the best that you can be. It's about joining a family with a story history where athletics and academics are held to the highest of standards. It's about creating the future leaders of tomorrow, all with a focus on one goal, graduation. It's the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. You can't predict the future, but with the right education, you can be prepared. When you evolve as a person, develop mind, body, and spirit, adopt new perspectives, and adapt to your surroundings, strong truths will follow. Truths that will guide you for the rest of your life. Loyola University, Maryland. Strong truths, well lived. Welcome to the edge for the glory of the Division I Mac Men's and Women's Basketball Championships. March 1st through the 5th at Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. Action guaranteed to have you on the edge of your seat. The way to the NCAA, the MAC Championship, March 1st through the 5th at Mass Mutual Center. Grab your tickets at Ticketmaster.com, MacAchusetts.com, or at the Mass Mutual Center box office. Back to the Gallagher Center where Phil Scafidi, Niagara basketball great from the late 70s and early 80s, just recognized as Calvin Murphy was in the first half as an ongoing refurbishing of the Gallagher Center. One of the things they are doing this year, Vin, is they've taken down all the old retired names in terms of the banners and put up new banners. So that's what they're in the process of doing now. MAC fans, the MAC Swimming and Diving Championship returned to Erie Community College in Buffalo from February 16th through the 18th. Purchase tickets today on mac.ticketly.com. And the Mac Indoor Track and Field Championships return to the New Balance Armory Track and Field Center in New York City. Come out on February 17th to support your Mac team. Doug Sherman, Vin Parisi, glad you could join us here on a late afternoon in western New York as the Purple Eagles are doing what they can to hang close. But a quick start to the second half by my Manhattan has Niagara down 14. That won't help. 0 for 2 from the line. And Father Anthony Mason not happy about Antoine's two misses. He takes foul shots very serious. Well, from the look on his face, he takes everything serious when watching <laughs> his sons play basketball. <laughs> Similar look is what we saw earlier, and Brutus knocks down his second three of the half. Huge bucket. Manhattan in complete control right now, up 17. Marvin Jordan, nothing but net. Manhattan's one of those teams, the better they play offensively, it seems as though their defensive pressure then goes to another level. Now, can't you say that typically about most people who play basketball? I mean, you just feed off it's of when things are energy. going well. Yep. Out of his peripheral vision, Green felt the official was a teammate, and that's a tough turnover to take. Spacing was a little tight right there. Certainly understandable. Here's Brutus guarded by Green. Just over five minutes gone here in the second half. Ian McCabe Moran back into the ball game. He leads Manhattan in the scoring column with 13 points all in the first half. 
great hustle. Andujar calls for the foul. Is, as you say, Vin, terrific hustle by Mason to get that basketball. And that's a great call that time. Not every foul has to be on purpose. Andujar with terrific job getting dirty, getting on the hardwood. But diving for that ball tripped him up, and that is the correct call by the officials. You hate to penalize hustle like that, but... Second foul on Andujar, and the fourth against the Jaspers in the second half. Turner gives back to Jordan. Two in a row for the sophomore from Peoria. We talked about that with Jordan. He could get streaky in a good way. Back-to-back -back threes in less than two minutes. He's got 11 points. High low, and Tanksley rightly is called for the foul. He had a hold of Brown, who couldn't release to go get that pass. That is his third personal foul, and the third against the Purple Eagles. Good job of Manhattan isolating four out, one in, when they saw Niagara match into the man-to-man. -the -man. No, they tried to get the ball inside to Ramel Brown on that last possession. We really haven't called Brown's name. They go into him again. He played so well on Friday against Canisius. He's so efficient when he gets the basketball in that close. So deep, so big and strong. Tanksley cannot even get around him right now. He's just pinning him on his backside. They're going to have to give some defensive help down there along the blocks. And so that spells trouble. Fourth foul. On Tanksley, Ali Langford, junior 6'6 from Salt Lake City, has to come in. Let's see if they continue to try and establish Brown inside. Brutus, a lot of contact, and he's able to convert. What a tough finish that time. By Brutus, lead back up to 13. Jasper's back into the aggressive 2 3 zone defense. That's eight points for the senior out of Wings Academy in the Bronx. Turner. Massiello controlling tempo now, and calling out half court sets offensively. Just to use that shot clock and execute. There they go into Brown again, and again, he is too much for the Purple Eagles' bigs to handle. I'll tell you, the spacing right now out of these half-court sets for the Jaspers are absolutely terrific. They're spacing out the perimeter. Gorgeous pass by Andrew Horner. Great job of sealing by Brown inside. Now, Brown's calling card is his defense and shot blocking. Last year led the back in blocks per game, doing the same again this year. After less than two years, he's already fourth on the school's all-time list, but he, when he is involved in the offense and they establish him, he gets the job done inside. Well, there's no question, and just a few games ago at Iona, an unbelievable win for Manhattan, down 17 with nine minutes to go. They win on a bank shot, Andujar three at the buzzer. For all the talk about Andujar, Brown dominated that second half, Tim Clues, the Iona coach, said afterwards. <laughs> Niagara calls a timeout. There is Ramel Brown, listed at 6'6", 215 points, a sophomore from Brooklyn. I think the thing that has made the Jaspers so tough to guard here on the road has been their offense and just as efficient on the perimeter as it is inside. When they spot up guards, they spot up shooters. Brutus, just one of many options, but they're able to get inside to the paint. That's what Massiello talked about. He wanted to get free throw attempts. He wanted to get the basketball inside. There's Kadani Brutus, who has had a good second half scoring the basketball. And again, uh, Manhattan is doing this primarily without George Beeman, who has seven points, five of them from the free throw line. Only one early field goal for the second leading scorer in the conference. We get another look at Ryan McCoy, who has come back off of Steve Massiello's bench. Mason lost the dribble. McCoy gives it up. McKay Moran. And Beeman is hammered. And they've called an intentional. That's Antoine Mason.
coming right at you. Very hard hit in the air that time. Mason just swinging across the head and neck. You can foul. So the offensive player does not get the shot attempt off without doing that. And now the officials will head over to see if Anthony Mason's son is going to be given a flagrant one or a flagrant two. Yeah, well, hey, I would not surprise, but not, not be surprised if see that aggressive. Be interesting to see here. They may be checking for an ejection. Yeah, though. yeah. I mean, it appeared to me he was not going for the basketball at all. And that's the key thing, you know, the crowd sometimes and, you know, you're watching the heat of the battle in the game. A guy goes down hard, but then you look back at it. And you know what? He was going for the ball. It was a hard hit. It was a bad fall. If they don't see any in intent on going for the basketball there, he's going to be in trouble. Well, it didn't take them long to make their determination. The officials split and go to each bench. And hopefully somebody comes over here to let us know what their determination was. Like Brian O'Connell's going to come over this way. Flagrant one foul, two free throws in the ball. So flagrant one, and Mason will stay in the ball game. And again, this is new this year: flagrant one or flagrant two. And so Beeman with a couple more free throws. as well. You're getting that possession after the free throws. Fortunately for the Purple Eagles, they're down 18 as it is. Beeman denies. Scooter Gillette locks it out of bounds. Good aggressive defense that time without fouling. Clock at 15. Really clamping up on Manhattan shooters right now, but Brown has him sealed again. Nice recovery by Gillette, but he is called for the foul. Now you're right, you had it just right. A terrific seal inside. As good a pass that is, it's the ability of Brown to keep the defender on the top side. You see the defense right there. Niagara has to get more deflections. They got to pressure the passer more. Can't allow these Manhattan guards to have clear looks into the paint right now. Ben, as a post player on the offensive end, how much of that sort of thing by Brown is innate? Just a natural feel for carving out space, and how much can be taught? Well, some guys have a better feel than others for the game, but they really work with their post players on individual instruction. They hit them with football pads, really seal, and then move the guy up the lane. A lot of guys seal and then keep their feet still. You gotta move them up the lane and create that space. Blocking foul call against McCabe Moran. Second foul on McCabe Moran. And the fifth against Manhattan. Niagara's got 17 fouls. Eight minutes gone here in the second half. Mason fouled on the shot. Brutus, the guilty party. So Mason will shoot three free throws when we come back. 11.49 remaining. Media timeout. The Jaspers in control looking for their seventh straight win. It's the playoffs. We haven't served a single calorie all season, and we're not serving one now. If you can't handle it, go sell foam fingers in the parking lot. How many calories are you carrying? Zero! How much Pepsi taste? A lot! Now get out there and make me proud. Yeah! Pepsi Max, zero calories, maximum Pepsi taste.
When every moment matters and a hand reaches out. When someone gives blood and a life is saved. That moment when heartbreak turns to hope, you're there through the American Red Cross. Every day, the Red Cross responds to nearly 200 neighborhood emergencies, and your support makes it possible. Use this moment to join us today. Visit redcross.org. Here's a look at the out-of-town scores from around the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference this afternoon. Fairfield, no problem with Fair, uh, with Marist, rather. Ryder defeated Siena down in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. And Loyola knocked off Canisius, so the Greyhounds will maintain at least a share of first place in the MAC. Iona not playing, to, or rather, there they are in the last game, leading St. Peter's by 10, excuse me. So Iona is looking to keep pace with Loyola, as is Manhattan here, if the Jaspers can... Hang on to beat Niagara. Upcoming TV schedule. Thursday, Iona will be taking on Canisius on ESPN3, and then we'll be in Baltimore on Friday night to see the Loyola Greyhounds take on Ryder. Speaking of uh, that three-way tie, holding court for first place, how big does Saturday's game become when Iona travels to Riverdale to take on Manhattan? Well, that game is big regardless of the standings, but when you factor that in, that's right. Amp it up, no question. Antoine Mason has had his struggles at the free throw line here today. Just like a turnover. Coming up empty, it's a lost possession. Foul off the ball. Mason hits the personal. Niagara really trying to turn up the defensive pressure on the basketball. Try to for force turnovers. You can't just shoot it well offensively. You've got to create some easy baskets and turnovers if you want to make one last push and run at it. Three fouls on Mason as he now heads out. Lemons replaces him. At the foul line, Ryan McCoy. Those are his first two points. Inbound intended for Jordan, goes out of bounds on touch, so Manhattan will have it back on the baseline. That's what the Manhattan press does. Makes you hesitant, makes it difficult to make decisions. You're going to see patience by the Jaspers now with the lead. You're going to see a lot of pick and rolls at the end of the shot clock. Gillette. Called for the block. Ninth team foul on the Purple Eagles, so uh, another one and one for Alvarado. That foul, by the way, on Scooter Gillette is his fourth. Jordan. He's been feeling it in the second half. Not only does he have three-point range, he has deep three-point range. A lot of his three balls look like they're going to be from the NBA line if there was one. Oh, he averaged about 11 points a game as a freshman on the Mackall rookie team, doing the same as a sophomore. Kate's being pounded by Wanye Green. The help defense comes, and the Purple Eagles take it away. See, that was great defense by Niagara. Green moved his feet, cut off the line of penetration, and then the help side defender to knock the ball off his leg. And Jordan recognized well and came over and got the ball. You will not see Manhattan let up defensively, regardless of what the scoreboard says. Wanye Green. 
Another three pointer for Niagara. As Purple Eagles try to chip away. Massiello runs out instruction. Also back or cut, but the pass was taken away by Lemons, who gives it right back to Alvarado. And Count the basket. Oh, what a swing. Just as when it's, it seemed as though the Purple Eagles had some momentum going. They hit back-to-back -back threes. They dug out the backdoor pass attempt and then just give it away. Lemons that time with the sophomore mistake and Mike Alvarado with the little NBA continuation. Down 17, Green in a bad spot. A tough spot to pick it up. Three-point try is good. The Purple Eagles keep knocking down those shots. Josh Turner this time. He's got to value the ball. Three threes in a hurry here. Foul on the drive. Joe Mahalik pleading with his team right now from across the court to not foul. It's a good thing when you get the ball handler into a speed-up situation like that. Often you see mistakes being made. But you cannot bail him out with the whistle. First foul on Jordan. And you see Alvarado holding his right elbow. What Niagara's doing is they're picking up and applying the pressure far away. And then on that speed dribble and foul call, you see the elbow hit. You can tell Alvarado, you saw him hesitate there, take a few extra dribbles and seconds in his free throw routine. Got them both. One man press breaker that time, Marvin Jordan. Sixteen points for Marvin Jordan. And a five second violation that time. The ball pressure by Jordan. Alvarado didn't realize that the count was on. Timeout called by Manhattan. Steve Massiello is really into his team right now, and it's mostly about defending the three-point shot. Jordan's been shooting it from deep. And this is when Mahalik's teams are at their best, and they get multiple contributors. We've seen Green shoot the basketball well. That is when they're the most potent offensively, when they get those ball reversals and the penetrating kick action. Well, the one thing Joe Mahalik says, boy, if we can get ourselves a big guy for the next couple of years, we're really going to be good. We know they've got the perimeter players. We know That's they can right. knock down the shots. But they, again today, have gotten virtually nothing inside. They're one front-line option away. Obviously, Steve Massiello. He's got that look of intensity oh, like boy. Coach Patino is mentor, doesn't he? Green trying for another three, and that certainly won't make Coach Massiello any happier. Purple Eagles on fire right now from downtown as Jordan slaps the floor Duke style for defense. Alvarado right to the bucket. Now it's great to slap the floor, but how easy was that drive? you got to keep the guy in front of you. Green blocked by Brown. Two-shot foul. One thing Mike Alvarado's done here late second half, when the pressure comes his way, he gets to the rim, keeping the defender on the hip and the soft touch again on the finish. 
That was a personal foul against Brutus. If this one drops, it's 11. That's why the three-point shot's the great equalizer in college basketball. Right back in it. Just need help side defense when Alvarado gets into these speed dribbles. And Duhar pick and roll to Brown. Unable to finish the dunk. It'll be Manhattan basketball on the baseline. See, and I like that action. It can't just be Mike Alvarado down the stretch here. This pick and roll action with Andujar. Great pick and roll. Great bounce pass. Brown not able to finish it. But you're going to see them go to that more often because Brown is just such a load inside. And he is so long. His long arms to go get the basketball. Lemons called for the foul. That's what Manhattan likes to do when they don't set pick and rolls out of their offense. Get guys coming off back screens, move cutters, really make you defend that action. And you see more often than not, if you're not disciplined and ready, you can pick up tacky ones. Four fouls now on Lemons. He goes out, Mason back in. Ramel Brown is replaced by Roberto Colonnette for the Jaspers. You see Brown and you see Alvarado get a quick blow before this home stretch here. Beeman continues to do his best work at the free throw line. Jordan back to Green. Around and out. Nice job by Mason to save it back to Jordan. Bad no look by Green. Terrific job by Andujar to step into the passing lane. You see Andujar get a lot of steals that way. Great at anticipating passes. Good defender away from the ball. Beeman looking for the shot. Left it short. Fresh shot clock now for the Jaspers. And smart offense. Use another shot clock to your advantage. Here goes Andujar. Nice drive and dish. McCabe Moran. You know, Emmy Andujar strikes me as the type of guy who may not wind up being the star on the stat sheet, may not draw the most attention from the fans, but he is a consummate teammate who makes people around him better. And he affects so many aspects of the game. When he, he can handle the ball, he has a mid-range touch. The Jaspers have been so opportunistic in the second half. Alvarado's been terrific, putting it on the deck. He's so tough to guard when he drives right. Look how smart Anduar here is on that one, and another dagger by Moran from deep. Well, McCabe Moran has a new career high with 16 points. This after having gone without a field goal for Manhattan's last three games. He's been 0 for 10 combined over the last three games, but he has been anything but for the Jaspers here today. His previous career best back on December 30th at Binghamton when he scored 14 points. And back in October in practice, Steve Masiello said the first two weeks of practice, I had to beg him to shoot the ball. So what are you doing? You're one of the best shooters we got. You're turning down shots. You could see his confidence continuing to build. Jordan. Niagara's missed its last couple from beyond the arc. Andujar could defensive rebound like he's a forward and then bring it up like a guard. Andujar tries to split the double team. Traveling violation. Called against to Carlos Anderson. 73-57. Manhattan trying to improve to 9-2 in league play. Timeout here at the Gallagher Center.
kind of just talk to Andujar, right? Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, unfortunately, I was going to Andujar. And then we started At the going. same point, they had the yeah. Alvarado. Just dumb luck with the timing. Doug Sherman, Vin Parisi back at the Gallagher Center on the campus of Niagara University. The Purple Eagles got the lead back to 11. But a nice response by the Jaspers. Fans use the hashtag MacHoops when tweeting about your Mac basketball team. Hashtag MacHoops is the best way to get all the information on basketball happenings around the league. From here, Manhattan goes back home to New York City and will host Marist on the second. And then the big game you were talking about against Iona, Vin, should be a classic at Dratty. Oh, it's going to be huge. And then those next three, Fairfield, St. Peter's, and Siena, I really, truly feel, Doug, after those three games, you'll have an idea in terms of seeding as we get into February if Manhattan really could hold court and stay atop the league. In terms of that race for first place right now, Manhattan started the day at 8-2, tied with both Iona and Loyola. The Greyhounds have already won today. Iona was leading at last check. I'll tell you, a foul there on the perimeter on the drive on Green's penetration, but before that, about 15 to 20 seconds of terrific pick-and-roll defense by Manhattan. Call number three on McCabe Moran as Green connects on the first. We were talking a little bit uh, before that last break, Vin, about the play of Emmy Andujar. He's got the basketball now, number 13 in Green. Just a freshman, but he's got, again, terrific size, and he impacts the game in a lot of different ways. Seven points, seven rebounds, five assists so far here today. And I love him because he can play about four positions on the floor. He can play point, he can play guard, he's a forward. Look at that. Nice execution. Alvarado picks up the assist as McCabe Moran continues to add to his career high. That is now 18 points. From a scouting scouting report perspective, and this is great X and O and speaking of scouting by Steve Masiello. That's a set play. Look at that nice little back screen there for the layup. But from a purely advanced scouting perspective, if you would ask Joe Mahalik before the game, George Beeman's gonna be one for twelve from the field. 0 for 2 from downtown. Will you take that? Of course, you'd say yes, but look at the other contributions. 16 for Alvarado, 16 for Moran, 9 for Colinette. Mason is going to head back to the free throw line. Remember, these two teams met last weekend down in New York City. Beeman was the catalyst on the offensive end with 24 points, but again, he has only one field goal. So far here today, and in spite of that, the Jaspers lead by 16. And Beeman has done good work from the free throw line. Nine for nine from the strike, so he's got 11 points. And we said at the top in our keys, Steve Masiello told us he wanted to get to the foul line. 22 for 29 from the free throw line for the Jaspers today. Mason from the line, 3 for 11 so far today. That is not going to go over well with that. No. Pass deflected away by Wanye Green. Screen and roll. Thomas will shoot two. Both teams really sending a lot of ball screens here. Trying to get penetration, get action to the rim, and if you can't get a high percentage shot, pick up some points from the charity strike. And defending that high ball screen and the screen and roll will define a lot of teams whether you're good or you're not so good. No question. 
what makes it so challenging trying to defend it both from the perspective of the guard and from the forward or whoever is coming up. I think the bigger difference between the offensive players if it's a little lightning quick guard and a big strong post then you can't switch it. Those are the toughest pick and rolls. Obviously a guard that could get in the lane that's all well and good but if they're similar positions you could switch it. That inability or when you don't have the opportunity to switch is what makes the action so hard. Would you just naturally switch every time if you have similar sized defenders? Oh, absolutely. That's what coaches try to try to look at. And offensively, you don't want to have guys in certain, you know, similar positions set in those pick and rolls. But I was always a big believer is the guard's gonna hurt you the most. Get out, show, dribble penetration and three pointers hurt you the most. You could always help on the roll guy down low. With this timeout, we take a look at what's ahead on the schedule for Joe Mahalik's Purple Eagles. On the road to Fairfield on the third at Ryder, and then three straight home games in mid-February against Siena Ryder and Canisius. And this Niagara team has dropped its last two games, and so they've fallen two games under 500 in league play. And Joe Mahalik's club has been building. You know, this has been a step back the last week or so, and certainly so far here tonight it's been a step back, but this is a young club with a lot of weapons that is building for later this year and for the future. And that's attributes of a young program. There's going to be some bumps in the road along the way, but this program is set up nicely for the next couple of seasons. Now Joe Mahalik is four-time winner of the Coach of the Year Award in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, and he is the winningest all-time coach in the league's history. He certainly has a formula that works. Pressure's broken. Alvarado goes to the reverse. Nice finish on the other side of the rim. 18 points for Alvarado to lead the Jaspers along with McCabe Moran. Mason, a little leaner. Collinette, strong for the glass. 16 point lead approaching four and a half minutes. You need to be patient offensively. Run your offense, get to the endings. Little lob to Brutus. Another assist for Emmy Andujar. See, that's just communicating off the back screen. You see Joe Mahalik immediately after the timeout turn around, get the clipboard. These are the teaching moments Niagara needs because Massiello really drawn up a lot of back screens and back cut options away from the ball. Manhattan's passing right on the money. Brutus has done a nice job coming off the bench with 10 points so far in this ball game. Again, he's one of the co-captains. He and George Beeman, senior leader for this Jaspers team that has turned the program around under this first-year head coach, Steve Massiello. Well, we talked about the scores from around the league. We showed you where they were at halftime. We still don't have a final on the Iona St. Peter's game, although it looks like you can probably put that one into the win column for the Gales. So we head into this Sunday with a three-way tie for first place. And then it looks like we will head out of the weekend with three teams still tied atop the max standing. And Loyola and Iona still holding court. Manhattan holding court. Play a good win for Ryder over Siena. That's been they Siena's had some good outings the last couple of weeks. They have, but still winless on the road. You know how important it is. You protect your home court. If you can sneak a little bit on the road, win a game here or there, but Siena's been unable to do that so far this season, and so they dropped to five and six and staying in the middle of the uh, the pack. But, you know, we talked about Steve Massiello as a leader for the MAC Coach of the Year Award, but certainly Mitch Bonaguro at Siena has to be right there, and I would assume if... Siena continues to at least hold middle of the pack there. He's going to wind up getting some consideration as well. Right, he's definitely got a tough situation roster-wise. But how about the job by Jimmy Patsos? Yep. And the Loyola Greyhounds as well. Off to the best start in that program's Division I history down at Loyola University. Four ten left in regulation. The Jaspers led by eight at halftime, 38-30, and have just stretched that lead ever since. Beeman. Just a bit off with that jump shot here today. Tanksley puts it up. No good. Long shots equal long rebounds. 
Mason. Niagara basketball. And we have reached our final media timeout. 79-61, Joe Mahalik's club playing catch-up all day long. Welcome to the edge for the glory of the Division I MAC Men's and Women's Basketball Championships. March 1st through the 5th at Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. Action guaranteed to have you on the edge of your seat. All the way with the slam dunk. The way to the NCAA, the MAC Championship. March 1st through the 5th at Mass Mutual Center. Grab your tickets at Ticketmaster.com, MacAchusetts.com, or at the Mass Mutual Center box office. Anaconda Sports, your sports authority. Proudly supporting local high school athletes throughout the region. We want to thank all the teams and coaches that have made Anaconda the number one dealer in the Northeast. Football, baseball, basketball, soccer, whatever your sport, Anaconda has what you're looking for. From the latest gear and team uniforms to logo shirts and hats for your company. Make Anaconda your connection. Hey, if you want to go for sports equipment, go to Anaconda Sports. It's awesome, baby. That's the worst half of football I've ever seen. Are you telling me we can't do this? I got this, coach. You know, people said, Pepsi Max, you can't get maximum Pepsi taste with zero calories. Who said that? But Pepsi Max didn't listen. We just delivered it. So get out there and taste that sweet zero calorie victory. The little guy's right. Yeah! Pepsi Max, zero calories, maximum Pepsi taste. Do you validate parking? The Pepsi Max National Mac Game of the Week is brought to you by Pepsi Max. Zero calories, maximum Pepsi taste. Blue Rock Energy. Blue Rock Energy saves you money on electricity and natural gas. Blue Rock Energy putting people in power. The American Red Cross encouraging you to do something that means something. Anaconda Sports, home of the Rock, is proud to sponsor the Mac. And by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. See how much you could save when you visit GEICO.com. There's Michael Alvarado, who has been instrumental in Manhattan in opening up this 18-point lead. Welcome back, everybody, to the Gallagher Center. Along with Vin Parisi, this is Doug Sherman. And the Purple Eagles trying to make a dent in the deficit, which stands at 18, under three and a half minutes remaining. Green misses. Turner is blocked and fouled by Andujar. Third personal on Andujar. So many different ball handlers when teams try to deny and take Alvarado away from getting it. So again, Andujar was able to play post defense in this league. Able to work in the paint on offense, also able to break the pressure. Rudy's got the offensive rebound. And offensive boards are killers here from Niagara's perspective. Just another 30 seconds that the Jaspers could milk on the clock. Good balance tonight for Manhattan. Four players are in double figures. Collinette with a chance for three. Terrific point guard play by Mike Alvarado. Collinette's going to get credit for the two points and maybe one more from the free throw line. But he drove left, sucked in the defense, and look at the gorgeous bounce pass behind. Well, their execution at the offensive end has been just outstanding here tonight, shooting 55% as a team, and Colinette's been a big part of that. Perfect four for four. He now in double figures as well. So five different Jaspers in double digits. 
Golinette makes the free throw and heads to the bench. Ramel Brown comes back in. And the Jaspers have also done the job from the perimeter, shooting 9 of 17 from beyond the three-point line. Mason. Nothing but that. Seventeen points for Mason, sixteen apiece for Jordan and Wanye Green. Niagara's shown a lot of flashes offensively today. They just need some more experience and time to put it all together. Under two minutes remaining. Now Andujar will go out with his seven points, seven rebounds, and seven assists. Ryan McCoy back on the floor. Foul called against Alvarado. Third on Alvarado. Well, Steve Massiello, as we just saw there, we've uh, talked about his relationship with Rick Pitino, which dates all the way back to his childhood. When he was growing up in White Plains, New York, he was a ball boy at Madison Square Garden for the Knicks back when Rick Pitino was the head coach of the Knicks, and that's a relationship that has grown ever since. His walk-on form at the University of Kentucky. Assistant form at Louisville. An assistant at Manhattan College back when Bobby Gonzalez had that terrific run. So he had a connection, and when the job opened up, he was, he was a natural despite being only 34 years old. Ben, he's the ninth youngest Division I head coach in the country, and shows that age is just a number. Just the perfect fit, has the recruiting ties to the area, has the pedigree with Patino, knows the school and the league from his days with Gonzalez. He was part of that national championship team as a player, but not for Rick Pitino, rather for Tubby Smith, who had taken over for Coach Pitino back in uh, 98. And to show you what kind of uh, basketball acumen he has and the respect he has of his peers, he winds up as a walk-on, becoming a captain of the Kentucky Wildcats as a senior. What I like most about him is there's a lot of guys that, a lot of young coaches that know the game from an X and O perspective, how hard he gets his kids to play on the defensive end. Why is that? Why does he have it? I think, mo I think motivation is not something tangible. I think it's just it's one of those gray areas of coaching and like his mentor Patino gets the best out of others. Foul on the rebound. And we've seen it so many times over the years where somebody comes from a big program to the MAC with a great reputation as a recruiter, but you never fully know until they step into the spotlight of being the head coach whether they have that it factor we're talking about. And when you talk to Rick Pitino, those final two years that Steve was his top assistant in Louisville, and so many parts, so many times he was turning over the practice to Steve and saw him in action on the floor and started comparing him to Kevin Willard, Nick Crone, and Billy Donovan, some of the best he's had. That's when he knew he was ready. Beeman fouled by Tanksley with exactly a minute on the clock. Yeah, if you get an endorsement from Rick Pitino, that goes a long way towards getting hired. That's right. That certainly uh, has worked out so well so far for the Manhattan Athletic Department. Tanksley with a quiet performance here. Fouls out. Just three points, seven rebounds. Drop back now defensively. From their perspective, you just do not want to foul. Lemons. No good. You throw the rebound.
Alvarado just trying to avoid the five-second call. Break the count. Brutus to Beeman. How many times did we see that tonight? The weak side back cut and the nice pass. Another block shot by Ramel Brown. Well, it's been a very workmanlike performance for the Jaspers here on the road, and they're on their way to picking up their first Western New York sweep in eight years. The coveted Buffalo swing. Not a lot of teams, regardless of how much success they've had over the years, get that 2-0 sweep. But they will do it as Alvarado is able to dribble out these final five seconds. They led comfortably by eight at halftime, and it got even more comfortable from there. Nice moment at the end of the ball game between the two head coaches, Joe Mihalik, the dean, and Steve Masiello, the rookie. Two guys that have a lot of respect for each other as coaches. And two guys doing a good job with their ball club. This Niagara team needs to just continue to improve and grow. Jaspers with another big road win. Steve Masiello's club wins its seventh in a row. 87-70, your final score. Back to the Gallagher Center right after this. Is the best in life passing you by because you still don't have a big screen high definition TV? How would you like a brand new extra large state of the art 50 inch plasma TV? Imagine watching your favorite shows and movies with spectacular high definition quality picture and sound right in your own home. Tronics Country will make it happen for you. No matter what your credit history, with Tronics Country, you are approved. If you have an active checking account and can afford flexible low payments, we'll send you a brand new 50 inch high definition TV. Guaranteed. I never realized how much I was missing out by not having a high-definition TV. The quality of the picture is amazing. It gets even better. With your paid order, Tronics Country will send you a free wireless laptop computer with software upgrade featuring 26 programs. Call now and receive your 50-inch plasma TV and laptop computer with software upgrade. No matter what your credit history, you are approved. Get the electronics you deserve. Call Tronics Country today at 800-580-1605. That's 800-580-1605. Back at the Gallagher Center, 87-70, Manhattan wins over Niagara. Our Pepsi Max player of the game, Michael Alvarado, 20 points, very efficient on the offensive end. Congratulations, our Pepsi Max player of the game. Let's send it over to Vin Parisi, standing by with the winning coach and our Pepsi Max player of the game. Vin? A oh, terrific job today by Alvarado and Mike how's this feel not a lot of teams able to come up here and sweep this Buffalo swing. Um, it was a good team effort. Uh, it actually feels good. We prepared, we prepared for this game real well and um, my teammates stepped up and when, when we all contribute we are um, a difficult team to play hard and beat. You definitely had a lot of guys contributing today dribble penetration and getting to the foul line. You guys really seemed good off the bounce. Yeah, um, coach just said, get into the gaps and don't be robots. You know, feel free. The way he coaches, he gives us a green light all the time, so we play with confidence. How important is the defense for you guys? When you guys are in that press and going up and down, your confidence seems at another level. Um, coach, like, coach installed in us this whole team, a whole team, the entire team about playing defense. And that's our um, number one goal going into each and every game. So that's what we try to do, stop by the teams. Congrats, man. Congratulations. You deserve it. And here with Steve Masiello. And coming into this, you said it was important that we get to the foul line. You look at this box score, you're going to be very pleased.